Women and children appear to be at slightly greater risk of injury from skiing. For women, the incidence of knee injury appears to be higher than that for men, although the injuries women sustain are generally less severe, involving grade I or grade II sprains to the medial collateral ligament. If one assumes that approximately 15 million US skiers ski an average of 14 days per year and sustain approximately 2,5 injuries per 1,000 skier days, then one can assume that there are approximately 525,000 ski injuries per year. Specific SKI injuries upper extremity. Today, a skiing fall is the most common cause of acute ulnar collateral ligament damage. Injuries to the ulnar collateral ligament comprise 8% to 10% of all ski accidents. They occur because of a fall with the ski pole maintained in the hand, resulting in a forced deduction and extension of the thumb. Although a number of criteria have been described to demonstrate complete rupture of the ulnar collateral ligament, stress testing with gentle valgus load near full extension is the most cost-effective, reproducible, and clinically effective technique. A positive test is demonstrated with increased valgus opening and no demonstrated endpoint. Because of the high incidence of Stena lesions in the skiing population, it is advisable to treat these injuries with operative exploration and acute ligament repair or seeing a suture anchor. Prevention is based on the presumption that if the pole is not in the hand at the time the skier hits the ground, the injury will not occur. Therefore, consciously discarding the pole during a fall should be emphasized and taught. In addition, skiers should be encouraged to use poles that have a low profile grip, one with fink grooves, without restraining devices of any kind, and to grip the pole without using straps. Shoulder. Trauma to the shoulder accounts for 4% to 11% of all ski injuries. The most common injuries are rotator cuff strains or tears, anterior glenohumeral dislocations, acromioclavicular separations, and clavicle fractures. The mechanism of injury is either a fall on an outstretched arm or an abduction external rotation torque applied to the shoulder by the ski pole pulling the arm back as the skier moves past the arm on the hill. Knee. The knee continues to be the most frequently injured area of the body in alpine skiing. Rates of knee injury have been reported to be between 20% and 36% of all injuries, with most knee trauma being that of injury to soft tissue. There are three common mechanisms of injury that result in ACL rupture. Valgus external rotation, the boot-induced ACL injury, figure 7, and the phantom foot phenomenon, figure 8. In addition to the epidemic rise in grade 3 ligament injuries in the knee, we have also observed an alarming rise in bone injuries in the knee in the form of tibial plateau fractures. These fractures almost always involve the lateral plateau, with a fracture pattern classified as Schatzka 1, 2, or 3. The higher energy fractures are less common but are also increasing in frequency. Head and Spine Head and spine injuries account for approximately 7% of alpine trauma. The frequency of these injuries has not changed significantly over the past 25 years, suggesting that improvements or alterations in equipment and slope maintenance probably have little effect. The mechanism of injury has been described as either a simple fall, a fall complicated by a blow with a ski or a ski pole, collision, or blunt trauma caused by chair lifts and T-bars. A complicating factor in many of the reports is high-speed skiing with loss of control. Simple falls are the most common injury mechanism, although collisions with immovable objects, trees, lift towers, equipment, result in the most severe, and sometimes fatal, accidents.